Hi, I'm Tim Berglund with Confluent. Here's a question. What if it was easy to build a streaming app as it was to build a CRUD app? That would be nice. There are a lot of frameworks for building CRUD apps on the web. Ruby on Rails exploded on the scene 15 years ago. If you were there, you know how absolutely revolutionary it was. And now we have other options like Spring Boot for the JVM ecosystem, which is great, but what do we have for building streaming apps? This is a much newer kind of development, and APIs like WebFlux are emerging, but in all cases, they require lots of individual projects that each solve small parts of the problem. But there really aren't any that work together in a cohesive way. It feels to me like writing a web app did in about 2001. Well, this is something that we've been working on at Confluent, not since 2001, but for a pretty long time as these things go. It used to be that building an event streaming application meant committing to manage at least four or five separate distributed systems. As I've often said, operating even one might be considered a bad life choice, but this was so much worse. You needed agents to capture events, needed a place to store the events, needed a processor to do computation over those events. And on top of that, you needed a database to put your results in so your application could query them. At least the database maybe wasn't distributed, but still, that's a lot to keep track of. It's like building a car out of parts from scratch, where most of the parts require some machining to get them to fit. That's fun to a certain degree if you like cars, but not when the business wants results from you in a hurry. Fast forward to today. At Confluent, we've been hard at work making KSQL DB, Kafka, and Kafka connectors snap together like Lego blocks, making it easy to build complete streaming applications in one place. And the good news is you can run all of this in a fully managed way on Confluent Cloud. Let me show you how it works. Imagine that you're a software architect at a retailer that wants to build a real-time shipment tracker to understand what geographic locations are the most active during a particular time. So I have a stream of orders that live in Kafka, obviously, and a table of customer data that lives in a Postgres database. And that seems like a good home for it. I need to join those two data sets together to know where each order is shipping, and I need to aggregate the result continuously and in real time. How can I build an app that stitches all this together? Well, to start, let's look at what I have in Postgres. Here I have my user profiles table, which maps a user ID to name and address information. Since I want to join this data to my orders, I need to move it into a Kafka topic. I definitely do not want to do a synchronous database query for each order event that I process. Taking an asynchronous event processor and embedding a synchronous call in it, even as innocent a thing as a database query, is not a great idea. So let's get that user data into a topic where it belongs. Just to show you that you have some flexibility, I'm going to drop back to the command line and create the topic we're going to put that user data into. I'll call it customers user profiles. That's the topic. You can do this from the Confluent Cloud UI, but hey, sometimes we just prefer the command line, and I want you to know you can do things that way if you want. Now that my cluster is ready and my topic exists, I want to send all the changes from my users table to that topic continuously. In our case, that's going to be any insert or update is going to be produced as a message to the customer's user profiles topic. Kafka Connect is the perfect tool for the job. I'm going to create a Postgres source connector called Retail Connector. It needs to talk to my Confluent Cloud Kafka cluster, so it also needs a key and secret, and it needs credentials to my Postgres database, which, as you can see, happens to be running in AWS. And we're interested in capturing changes on a table called User Profiles. Now let's start that connector up and see how it looks. Looks good, and so we'll launch. And now my connector is running and data is being written to that topic. So next steps, let's do interesting things to it in KSQL DB. I'll create a KSQL DB cluster that runs against the Kafka cluster I just created. Through our typical movie magic, we'll see that that cluster is already provisioned. And hey, remember we used the command line just a moment ago? That's good because we actually need to use the CLI to link the permissions of our new KSQL DB cluster to our existing Kafka cluster. Creating a KSQL DB cluster automatically creates a thing called a service account, which we can assign permissions to. I'm going to say that this KSQL DB cluster can read, write, and create topics, that's important, topics that start with the word customers. Yeah, that seems highly specific, but it happens to be exactly what we need. Now, back to the KSQL DB web UI. 
I'm going to set some query properties before I get started. In particular, setting auto offset reset to earliest makes demos like this a lot more interesting. It makes it easier to see query results even when data isn't actively flowing into input topics. Now, let me create a stream around my customer user profiles topic. Because that's an Avro topic, the integrated Confluent schema registry has provided KSQL DB with all the schema information it needs, so I don't need to provide any column names in the create statement, which is nice. But remember that this topic, which is now a KSQL DB stream, is a changelog of mutations made on a database table. That means that the ultimate final view we want for this data is for it to be a KSQL DB table. So let's do that using a create table statement. We'll group the rows by user ID and take the latest value by topic offset of the state and zip code fields. Now we have a table called user profiles that is not residing in some external database accessible only by synchronous queries, but is inside our event streaming platform and totally integrated with all the stream processing capabilities we want to use. Just to prove it, I'll run a quick select on it to see the user profiles are politely tucked away in that table where they belong. Now that we've got a table for our users, we need a stream for orders. Now, orders are entities, and as such, they could be represented in a table that might be useful for certain features you'd want to implement, but they're also events. So for right now, we're going to model them as a stream. This create stream statement does just that. You may be thinking that we haven't created a topic called customers orders yet, and you'd be right, but we've got KSQL DB configured to create that topic for us automatically with the given schema if it doesn't already exist. Of course, we don't have KSQL DB configured to fill out the topic with test data, although, I mean, that would be interesting. Uh, so let's just paste in a few insert statements to give us something to work with. Our order schema allows a user to order an item for an amount. Hey, look, it's the MVP. We'll add multiple item orders in the next sprint. For now, that's what we got, but we can't rightly ship to a user ID. So we'll have to join these order events to our users table so we know where they're going to ship. We do this by creating the shipments stream. Events in the shipment stream have, as you can see, an order ID, an item ID, a state, and a zip code. And they're formed by joining that order stream to the users table we made earlier. Now that we've got that enriched stream, we can do some analytics on it. Suppose we're curious about how many different postal codes we're shipping to in each state. We can calculate that by grouping by state and running a count distinct on the zip field. The resulting table is continuously updated every time a shipment comes through. It's updated automatically. To prove it, let's run a streaming query on this table and subscribe to its changes. This is what KSQL DB calls a push query, since any time the table changes by virtue of new orders being placed, the query will push changes to the subscribing application. And here, that application is just the web UI in Confluent Cloud, and we can see how many unique zip codes orders were sent to in Pennsylvania, California, and Washington. It seems our customer base is as eclectic as it is exclusive. We can also do a more conventional query on that table using a key. This is what KSQL DB calls a pull query, since the application, again, it's just the web UI because it's pretty and it's easy to see, uh, the application basically pulls a result to itself. Here, we're just getting the count of unique zip codes in all of the Pennsylvania shipments, just like a normal database query would do, except this is done on real-time streaming data. And there you have it. Building an event streaming application requires you to pull together and process many asynchronous feeds of data. Traditionally, this is the work of several different distributed systems, which are not altogether well integrated out of the box, as if they even come in any sort of box together to start with. Confluent Cloud, though, makes this easy because all the components were engineered to work together as a single cohesive platform. So you know what to do. Get started building something with KSQL DB and Confluent Cloud today.